Hey, I got an animal mystery for you guys. Ooh. This is the last time we did an animal mystery on the podcast. It got it was the first podcast we did that did, got over a billion downloads. So I wow. feel like we should do it again. Yeah, that, that YouTube must have been record. a while ago because I think most of them are averaging around six billion now. Yeah, I know this was yeah. the first one that got a billion. Yeah. So wow. All right, so I'm going to set this up for you. Feel free to throw out guesses as I go. Okay. Um, okay. So this all goes down. Well, a mother and her seven-year-old daughter are hiking along the Calusahatchee River in Florida. Mm-hmm. Okay. Okay. So they're hiking. I mean, it's a mom and a seven-year-old. What could go wrong? Well, <laughs> quite a bit. A lot. A lot. <laughs> yeah. Florida man. <laughs> a lot could go wrong. So I think the yeah. Calusahatchee is like, it's around the Everglades, right? Yep. Is that kind of mm-hmm. in that area? Yep. All right. So, yep. so pretty yep. much Northern Everglades. Everglades. What could yep. go right if you're in the Everglades, really? Right. <laughs> right. Exactly. <laughs> um, so she looks along the bank of the river and she sees a creature that she says is much bigger than her seven year old, just kind of hanging right. out along, along the bank in the water. What are we thinking? Hmm. What are we thinking the, the water. problem is here? Definitely. I mean, I mean I'm. Oh, go ahead. Go ahead. Rita. I, I mean, I'm obviously definitely thinking already said it some type of alligator crocodilian type reptile right. thing. Yep. Right there with you. I mean, it's, the, it's a Florida ever. Well, but that, that wouldn't really make news now, would it? Well, yeah. An alligator be much almost something a mystery. <laughs> okay. So. Yeah. It's not much of a mystery. Uh, okay. So just to play devil's advocate, Retep's going with, uh, he's going with an alligator. It seems like a standard guess. I'm going to say Burmese python, invasive snake taking over the Everglades. Definitely longer than a seven-year-old. So, so you're right that it's invasive, but it is not a Burmese python. And in fact, they didn't know that they had a problem with this new invasive species until Whoa. this happened. And they've discovered there's more than one of these. I'll give you one more clue. It's okay. a fish. A very, very large fish that hmm. does not belong in Florida, and they don't know how it got there. They're, they I, don't I'm even going, have a theory yet. I'm going to go with, uh, with carp because they can get huge, and they're, I imagine they're invasive if they're not there supposed to be there. There are many types there, of invasive, so. invasive. That's Giant a good, carp. That's a really good guess, Retep. That's a really good guess. Um, Florida Everglades is a goddamn mess, by the way. Like, there's... There's Mayan cichlids, Burmese pythons, Reese's macaques, tegus, Nile monitors. I mean, there's just it's a it's a goddamn mess over there uh, of invasive species. So it's like, what have we thrown into the cocktail now? Well, it's a we've large thrown something new. Yeah. Sorry. We've thrown something new in, and I'm going to give you one more clue. Ooh, okay. It's, it's... Wait, can I take a guess first and see if I just knock it out of the park pre-clue? Yeah. yeah. Okay. I'm going to guess it's kind of weird because it doesn't seem like an invasive species because it's a North American native that's only two states over in Louisiana. But I'm going to guess a giant alligator gar. No, but I did. Me and my buddy were fishing when we were like 10. Uh And we found like a four foot long alligator gar on the bank of shores of Lake Ontario. Okay. And, you know, big, nasty mouth with teeth. Yeah. And, oh, yeah. uh, you know, we had caught, like, one sunfish that day. Yeah. <laughs> and this thing was, like, freshly washed up. So we we hooked our line into this alligator, this dead alligator gar, and just, like, paraded around the docks, like, showing it to all the fishermen who were, Telling like, everyone you caught stoked. it, yeah. This, yeah, this one guy how, gave us Slim Jims because yeah. he was this so This is how you it. made it to where you're at in life, by the way, <laughs> if you right. want to know something about Patrick DeLuca. <laughs> <laughs> um, all right, so here's a... Here's a little, your last clue, and I have a feeling okay. Forrest is going to get this. So if you know, let Peter go first. This giant, huge fish that does not belong in the Everglades that could be a big, big problem hails originally from the Amazon. Oh, boy. So it's from the Amazon, like a river in the Amazon? So it comes yeah. from a river in the Amazon. It's been featured on the TV show River Monsters with Jeremy Wade on Animal Planet several times. Is it Jeremy Wade? He's not uh, there. No, he's. I have no idea. I mean, I don't know anything about uh, the this this specificity specificity. Where the English the specifics language. of where uh, <laughs> something like that would come from? I'm I'm going with. Uh, Can you name a fish from South America? I that literally might... can't. Yeah, so I'm going to go so. with a carp gator, which is a carp that has teeth like an of alligator. Of course, yep. basically an alligator gar. I mean, yeah, that, you're incorrect. Exactly. 
That is the logical guess as a carp gator. I'm going to go... Yeah, it's got to be one of two fish. It's either red tail catfish, super common in the pet trade, could probably survive in the Everglades, or not that shocking, though, because it looks like a catfish. So I'm going to go Arapaima. Big, giant, scaled South American fish. Will, go ahead and pull up up the answer. And there you go. Second guess, Arapaima. Yeah. Is that it? Look at that. Okay. That's it. That's an Arapaima. Super cool fish native to South America. Yeah. They, and that's, they get much, well, maybe not much, but they get even larger than that. See how they've got that downward sloping head. They come up and take these big gulps of air. And when you're down in the Amazon, you'll just be, it'll be super peaceful and quiet. And you're just, you're, and it'll be the Arapaima taking a big slurp of air off of the surface. They're super I have cool. Some friends who live their lives this way and have wow. the slope in their head. Look uh, at the. I mean, it's very strange though because the body it looks like it's going to be a giant fish, and then it, the head is like yeah. very snake like. It, it's got like yeah. the head of a minnow. <laughs> yeah. The body. It wow, looks like one of our battle animal. royale creations. It so, does. Forrest, what about the what about these things? I mean, so it's obviously in, it looks like it eats a lot, so it's probably Definitely. eating everything in sight. Yep, predatory uh, fish. I mean, dude, like I was saying, the Everglades are so fucked up. At this point, you know. I shouldn't say this as a wildlife biologist, but like, should we just put a fence around the Everglades and see what else we can put in there? It's like, let's just, <laughs> let's get some fucking lions and we'll get some arapaima and we'll bring some stuff in from Asia. We'll just throw it all in there. It'll be like a big amusement park because it's basically what the Everglades is now. I mean, it's just, it's crazy. But no, all jokes aside, yeah, they're big predatory fish. They use that sucking motion that I was explaining earlier to slurp in a whole lot of water and with it their prey. They will mm-hmm. gobble up tons and tons of food. I mean, I don't know the you know statistics, but like anything they can eat, they will. That's how they get to their giant size. And I'm sure, you know, the real question is, how did one get into the Everglades? So most of the animals yeah. in the invasive species in the Everglades are invasives from the pet trade. But you're not going to Petco and picking up a 12-foot arapaima. So I'm not really <laughs> sure what is going on here. Like, how did it... It has to be some rich... Floridian drug lord that has a massive aquarium with them or something like that and then was like fuck this shit and dumped his uh got too big dumped his, yeah it's it's got to be like how how does that get there i mean i don't know it's yeah. it's super cool animal so it's because i guess because it lives in the i don't know why the amazon would have less oxygen in the water but it's it's evolved to be able to survive in super super low oxygen water does that make mm-hmm. sense mm-hmm. cuz it says they yep. can survive on water. dry yep. They can survive on dry land for 24 hours, no problem. That's what I was talking about, about the gulps of air. So what happens is the Amazon jungle floods, right, every year in the wet season. And then the water recedes, and these fish get stuck in these pools of water, like the size of my office or the size of your living room. Well, a pool that size gets stagnant, right, with no flow, with nothing moving. Uh The water goes stagnant, and when the water goes stagnant, algae blooms, the water becomes anoxic, there's no oxygen left. And these fish have evolved to be able to actually take gulps of air to supplement their gills working in an oxygen-rich environment. And so wow. they, that way they can wait it out. You know, you can have a fish that size. Like, look at where these guys are standing. You know, it's, it's, it's the same width as the fish. I don't know if this yeah. is a, a river or a puddle, but the point is that thing could live in a puddle that size until the rains come again by gulping air and just gobbling up anything wow. that swims in that pool. Is it uh, so? So, uh, it's invasive. Do you think that it can be controlled by people simply fishing them out or trying to catch them? Or, or well, one thing I'll just respond with that the that the article I read says is that an arapaima they live really long, so they'll live about twenty years on average. And, oh wow! Uh, and uh, will lay about a hundred thousand eggs during their lifetime. Yeah. So. That sounds like a lot. Dude. It's, one, it's, it's one of those things where there's like a, an exponential growth, and if you don't catch it in time, you're screwed, right? If there's four of them, and they're adults, and they haven't spawned or they haven't got together, and you rip them out of there, you're good. By the time there's 20 of them, you're screwed. Like, you're never going to yeah. find 20 fish in the ever. You're never going to find four, but you know what I mean? Like, right. if they find each other, if some, some – I'm going to make all this up, but if some – drug dealer in the northern everglades and you know some redneck with an aquarium both dump their arapaima in at opposite ends of the glades and it happens to be a male and a female all it takes is for those two fish to find each other and it's basically all over um now that said other things come into play like what predators could a baby arapaima have in the everglades that they don't have in the amazon 
the Amazon's a much harsher environment, so my guess would be probably very few. But yeah, they could totally take over the Everglades. I mean, Mayan cichlids have, armored catfish have, all the other things I listed earlier. I mean, they're not the first invasive fish in the Everglades. There's tons of them. So yeah, they. Yeah. I wouldn't be surprised if they established. And and I mean, if I went to, the, I go to the Everglades, you know, before COVID, at least a couple times a year. I'd be fucking excited to see one of these things swimming around the clear water. Did you eat them? Are those good? Are they eat- tasty. Uh, they do eat them. Their numbers have started to dwindle because people are eating them more and more. I think they've become like an export, like an Asian delicacy. But you can just tell it's not a good eating fish. Like, look at it. Those big rough scales, that flat bony yeah. head. Like, that doesn't look delicious. Like, that's not a good, that's not good meat. <laughs> it definitely does not. No. Uh, all right. But I'm hungry. Well, hey, if you enjoyed this, subscribe, pop a like, tell yeah. a friend. We do this every day. Kill an Arapaima if you see it in the Everglades. Do it. <laughs> <laughs>